Now, this is not going to be a complete tutorial on how to use the bo books, B-O-O-X, or books, I, I don't know how they say it, um, tablet, which is a reading tablet. Now, this one happens to be on the Note Air 3C, but I'm going to go over with you because I get lots of questions about this. Just some basic operations. I just want this device to read PDF files, reading books, that's easy stuff. But I want to just, I want to get information onto the device so that I can read it online or offline. And I want to be able to take notes and have those notes show up so that I can see them on my phone. So I'm going to walk you through how to do that. It's actually relatively straightforward as long as you remember some of the rules of engagement. So stay tuned. We're going to jump right to this. So I apologize for the crude screens that you're going to see here. I, I really didn't want to take the time to do a screencast. So I'm hoping this is the software I use, which is Snagit Editor to kind of build out some of my documentation. So we're just going to walk through this from a documentation perspective. So the first thing that we want to do once we boot up this device and we connect to the internet, it's in your upper right hand corner. And I think I have a screenshot of the page. Let me see here. Um, yeah, right here. So number six, if you pull down on your screen here, right approximately where number six is pulled down, you're going to see where you can hook up your network and you're going to want to connect to a Wi-Fi, whether you're sharing that Wi-Fi from your phone or your house or your office or what have you. So you want to connect to the Wi-Fi. And then you're going to need to make a decision there. Number two, you're going to start with the library and you just want to click on the library and go to number two, bind an account. And what this is going to do, you can see number four there on the screen. I've bound my account to a Google Drive. I could do it to multiple drives, and they have half a dozen or so options. The popular ones are all there. Dropbox, I think, Google, uh, One, uh, OneDrive, all of them are there. So you can pull files from any of these places. But notice at the very top of the screen, number three, so number three is indicating that we are on, in a cloud resource. So when we click on this, and we're going to see this in next screens, just pay attention to number three. And right here next to it, this bookcase thing, this looks in uh, books. That means that you're on the local device. So we're going to walk through that. So first thing you need to do, bind this, steps one through three. Number four is where we're going to select to access information. So let's go ahead and do that so what we've done is we've said okay now that we've bound the information here now i want to select what information i want to pull to my local device and to do that now that we have google drive there we're just going to click on it now once we get into google drive it's going to show all of our drives and folders back there where number two is it's going to show all the information that's on the google drive that you've pointed books to go look at and so again remember we're here in the library still right and um, here's the document itself number two and and here we're just looking at the document so what i did was i just you just hold your finger down for you know count to three and then this menu is going to appear for you and in this menu you want to just add this to the bookshelf number three and we're going to move it from the bookshelf now for those that are watching this and are better using their this product than I am, I'm sorry. I'm just trying to take the most simple way to get there, but there may be other ways to get there. So again, we're, we've downloaded a document. Let's say here, this is the document that I want to read while I'm on my device. I've just deposited that document inside of my Google Drive like I normally would any other day, right? And now it appears here because I have bound that Google Drive to my device, and now I'm I'm collecting, I'm putting it into my bookshelf, which is basically moving it over to my local device. Now, once it's on your local device, and this one's a little small, I'll make it a little bigger. Once it's on your local device, notice here we're still in the library, and notice here number two, the bookshelf. Okay, we're not on the cloud, we're on the bookshelf. And now notice that I have four of 13 files in there. You can kind of see some of the files in the background. 
and here a number on number three these are the files that have been downloaded okay so that's back here right we're selecting this number four that's what we're doing here i just wanted to re-emphasize where number four we were on the cloud still right i wanted to make sure you're very clear on this now we're on the bookshelf number three we're going to click on that bad boy and see what our files are okay so here we got a little bit of a screen so we're going to go through these one through nine real quick here remember you have this menu on your left hand side that tells you where you are the library is where we've been working so far in this video the store is where you can get books right buy books things like that like a kindle store notes number two there is where you take notes and we're going to talk about that in a minute storage if you use like for example book books has if you go into settings they have a tool i can't remember what it is books drop or something like that and it allows you to connect to your device and then you can transfer files if you transfer files that way most likely they're going to end up right here in storage so don't forget that's where they end up it took me a little while to figure out they were dumping there but it's easier again it's a lot easier just to dump those files into google drive at least for me and then just download them to the device here number three all right and oh by the way when you do this they sync right they stay in sync with google drive so that's nice okay so there and then you can load all types of apps this is an android device so go to go to town on it five this is very helpful the magnifying glass there is a search and it searches across the entire platform and it does work very well um, and you'll see in it like in my example it's google drive and then it'll say above it books if it's local and from google drive or if it's just on google drive it'll say google drive so you just need to be aware of that you'll see when you go to search number six we talked about this is when you pull down on number six and there's a bunch of settings in there i don't show you all of them they're pretty self-explanatory wi-fi is one of them right connecting to the internet and you can play with the other settings number seven here i just wanted to represent it's very important that you realize these tags this indicates that this file is a pdf file not although it's handwritten you can see it's handwritten I'm 50% of the way through it, but it's a PDF file. And this is really important because we're going to talk here in a moment about the difference between editing PDF files and editing notes. But here, number seven, PDF file. Just remember, I'm sorry. Um, so I wanted to bring that up, but that's that's number eight, actually. Number eight's PDF file. So number eight. Number seven, what I want to bring out here is, do you see these folders right here? UA reading, UA personal, church. Those are all, if you click there, you can create these folders. And then if you right click on the file, you can select to move it. Do you see right here, move? You can just select to move it there. So, so that's kind of how you do that. So again, you can create these folders here within your bookshelf. I think they call them bookshelves. So they like the word bookshelf and another word they like, which um, doesn't make a lot of sense to me, but oh notepad you're creating notepads instead of notes so anyways that's how you do that and then eight here is uh again you're doing the pdf and then the folder okay let's move on all right so remember i told you that there's a difference here this is a pdf file remember this is very important this is a pdf file that we're editing right here and you're going to notice it says right there pdf you're going to notice there's a difference in the edit. This is a note that you're editing. Notice one through five. We're going to talk about it in a minute. But notice it's different than this one. Okay? So it's just to be aware of. And to get this screen to come down, you click in the center of the screen. Remember, if you click to the left or the right, it's going to flip the page for you. So it's, it's a little bit of a touch. You can adjust those gestures here, by the way. But the default is you just click in the middle of the page and boop, this bad boy comes up. You can do auto turn and preview. Yeah, I'm not going to go through this or split view, all kinds of cool stuff. But here you notice that you're on the file. But notice here, number one, that there are multiple files that I have open. Why? Because this is a PDF reader is what this is. Nothing, nothing too fancy. It's just a PDF reader. And it does work well. But 
we have to be able to to um, edit it and to edit it we're going to have to select number two which we're going to look at here in just a moment um, but in the middle that file boop okay good deal so let's move on to number two so here when you click on the middle right here this menu comes up and then you click right here on notes number two this is what appears okay now you can see that i've underlined this and back here there's a cool setting called smart scribe look at it and enable the stuff because you can just like circle a section and then it automatically underlines it for you which is this right here number one there it's very cool so you can do that and then again you can write germany poland and then with that smart stuff you can just like scribble and it erases it's pretty cool stuff so anyways this is the menu here for pdf for pdf Let's go ahead and move to notes real quick. Notice I'm over notes. I'm not in the library. I'm over notes right here, number one. So here, number two, these are notes inside of a folder. Multiple notes inside of a folder. Kind of looks like a folder, I guess. Um, number four, number three, this is an individual file. So this is a file, just a local file, not in a folder. And, and number four indicates that it's synchronized, that little check mark. And up here, you can't see it on the screen, but up there, there's a little sync button. And you'll see if it's not synced, it'll just be a circle. Okay. And then here, number five, um, to create a new note. Okay. I like using notes natively on this instead of having PDFs that I'm editing all the time because you get a lot more features and functionality so if you've already started on another tablet and made notes then you're going to have to use the pdf version but for all your notes at least for me as you can see here i've written down some instructions um pdf well my handwriting's not the best so maybe it's only instructions i can read but i i like it because it's a different um different feel so this notice the toolbar has similar tools in it but it's a little different Okay, we flip pages here, number three. We can rename it here, number one. We can also choose a template, and it has, when you say choose template, see how I have lines? You can make it anything, and you can change it just for one page as well. So maybe you're working on a graph or something for the second page. You can make this a graph on the second page and a calendar on the third page and then back to the lines on the fourth page, whatever you want. If you're a little nervous about whether it's syncing or not, you can click on sync right here. And this is about it. Here are a few things I just want to bring out just as we conclude. First, if you're working offline, meaning you're not connected to the internet, does this work? Yes, it does work. But you have to make sure, and I think you saw here on one of the screens, I had something called a sync log. Um, I can't remember where it is. Right here, sync log. Because when I'm working offline, I just make a note inside this log on files that I worked offline in. Because what happens is, it just like, in fact, it, Sync used to work like this years ago, um, before Google kind of mastered it and other companies have mastered synchronization of files and data. This is the way you used to have to do it. If you're offline, you can still make changes and write and do whatever you want. But when you go back online, you have to reopen the document and then just do a little change. Like for me, if I have an underline, I'll just put another underline with it, right? Or something like that. Just do a little change so that when you close that file out, once you remember you have to be online, once you close it out, then it will suck up all of your changes that you have, right? It'll synchronize all your changes back to the source and then you'll be good to go. And that applies to both on notes as well as taking notes inside of files and highlighting and things like that, reading. If you want this stuff to be synchronized, then when you get back online, go back in, just highlight something else and then hit save and then it will automatically save all of your changes back up to the source. Well, I know that was a quick, really wasn't that quick, I guess, but it was a tutorial. This is just down and dirty, get you up and running. What we went over today was you can drop files into Google Drive. You can edit these files by downloading them to your local device. You can edit them whenever you, wherever you are. This we can edit as a PDF file, but we also have the ability to create notes natively on the device and edit and create notes 
um, there natively. So it is a powerful tool once you get through some of the nuances of the use. I will say this about the tool. It's a little heavy. I used to have a Sony digital paper, and it was way lighter and way bigger, right? It was 13 inches. This one is 10 inches. It's a little heavy, in my opinion. I mean, it's light, but it's heavier than the digital uh, paper was. But it does have a lot of capabilities. Also, the battery life, not so good. It lasts about a day. If you're using it straight, on and off, you know, maybe two days if you're if you're kind of letting it go to sleep and turn off in between use. But it does use the battery quite a bit. But it does have the backlight to it. It's doing a lot of cool stuff in the background. So if you just charge it every night, you should be good to go. Good luck.